Hello everyone, greetings to one and all. In today's session, I'm going to show you different ways to set breakpoints in a debugger tool. Knowing these options for setting a breakpoint makes your debugging journey very useful and it can also shorten the journey before we find the issue. It helps us to spend the time more effectively and also helps us to understand all the dynamics through which the breakpoints can be set. Now in today's session, I'm going to show you how we can set breakpoints even during runtime of the debugger tool. Uh, there are different options for setting a breakpoint. Yes, all the options given for setting breakpoint needs to be used appropriately for effective results and the slash h, the keyword for triggering the dynamic breakpoint. Moreover, it is a command which is used for triggering the breakpoint tool. Now let's jump on to the session. So in today's session, I'll be using one of the standard T code uh, VF11. Okay. Now consider, I'm just taking this just to example, I mean, just to help you with a uh, standard issue and uh, through that standard issue, how we can close in where the standard issue error comes from, etc. stuff. So consider I'm entering a, a wrong document ID here and I press enter. So you see here SAP throws me an error called document12345 does not exist. Of course, I'm entering a, a false value. That's the reason I'm getting this error. Now, in your case, you can get any error. Okay, It can be a valid SAP error or it can the error message can be from custom messages or it can be any error. Now, for closing in where this error comes from, you can make use of debugger tool and you can get exactly to the point where this error occurs. Now, how do you get there? As a first step, as soon as this error comes, double click on this error message, be it an error warning or information, whatever it is, double click on this error message. You see here, there is something called as message number, right? So this is what is very important for us. So the last three digits will always be the number and the first, I mean, whatever is there before that will be part of the message class name. Okay. Now here it is V of 033 is the message class. Now I will make a note of it. Now. I'll go to the same screen. I will type slash h in my command bar and I press enter. Now, as soon as I press enter, you see debugging switched on. This means that on my next action that I'm going to perform on this SAP screen, my debugger tool is going to pop up. So I'm explicitly triggering my debugger tool without placing any session breakpoint. Okay. Now I click on F8 or enter, whatever it is. You see my debugger tool popped up, but let us go to breakpoint and watch points tab. You see I have not placed any breakpoint. In case if you are not familiar with the tools and the different options available here, I recommend you to watch my previous videos where the tool has been explained on a detailed level and post which this session will be more relevant and you can absorb most of the information that I'm about to share. Now, you see the breakpoints as of now is zero, right? There are no breakpoints. However, I was interested on the message V of 033. Now, how do I close in to the exact point where the message throws? So I go to the breakpoints option here, breakpoint at, and I will reach out to breakpoint at message. Clear? I click this. I enter the message ID, which is VF. Okay. And the number is 033. Okay. Of course, that was the number we have seen in that message pop-up window, right? Let's not worry about the type of message, even though this is error. Uh, if you are very sure about the type of error message, you can give it here. You will always have different options, whether it is an error, uh, warning, information, success, or about message, uh, whatever it is. But, but I would prefer not to give any type here because you are more interested on the message rather than the type of the message. So in case if you are very specific about that, you can give that value as well and press enter. As soon as you press enter, you see there is a confirmation that breakpoint set. Now, if you go to this breakpoint watch points tab, you see there is a breakpoint set here as well. And you can see message ID is equal to VF, message number is equal to 33, and message type is space, which we have not filled. Now, in the F, in the desktop 3, of, I mean, or desktop 2, or wherever you are, if you press F8 or continue option, the debugger will exactly stop at the point where this error message is triggered so this is where the error message is triggered and from here you can backtrack and you can understand 
what is the root cause or what led to this error message and you can narrow down the source of the issue helpful right so this example what i showed you now is just a very small example however in your real case scenarios you will get different error message you can always reach out to each of the error message and you can backtrack and you can narrow down the source of the issue now let's move on to the next example now here i have a function module being called now in your example or in your case you would exactly know a function module has been called during any part of your execution now for example even if there is a custom function module that is being called during your execution or if there are any other function module that you are sure or you want to check whether the function module is being called what you can do you can trigger the breakpoint using the slash h parameter and copy the co i mean you should be knowing the function module which you wanted to stop at so that you can enter the same get the details of the function module name go to the breakpoint at here breakpoint at function module here give the function module name and press enter now if you go to your breakpoint section you will have another breakpoint that is placed where the breakpoint is placed at this function module now let's see what happens i'll complete this execution and i'll trigger my next ex execution in the next execution if you see my breakpoint is stopped at a point but i don't know where it is but if you carefully watch at the top you see it is stopped at this function module this is the exact function module that i want to check whether this function module is being called so this confirms that the function module is called and from there you can debug using f5 f6 f7 m8 which we have seen in our previous videos and you can proceed along and you can use your debugging analytical skill to understand the flow logic or to narrow down the source of the issue this is the second way of using this breakpoint at statement now let's to the let's move to the third next option breakpoint at now you see function modules are always used based upon a code called call function right now what if i want to place a breakpoint or in other words what if i want to know all the function modules that are being called during an execution i'll simply use call function here okay and i'll enter now you see my breakpoint is placed and if you go to the breakpoint tab my third breakpoint is placed where the abap command is call function so here i would have placed a breakpoint at all instances where the call function command or in other words call function syntax is used throughout my execution now when i keep executing you see my breakpoint i mean as of now i have completed the execution purposefully now let me retrigger it again you see my breakpoint stopped at a point where the call function syntax is being used so the abap statement not only call function if you are very sure about a select statement or if you are sure about that a select statement is from a particular table then you can write the entire abap statement as well when you are sure about a statement you can execute you can enter that statement and expect the breakpoint to stop there if your program flow touches that line of code now in our case the breakpoint whatever we keep doesn't give us an uh, confirmation that the flow logic will stop there it will only stop if your execution flow touches that lines of code right so we have seen three options let's move on to the fourth option wherein breakpoint at subroutine now as i told you before subroutine is part of a code block now if you are sure about a subroutine that i mean where you have written your specific needed code and you wanted to know whether the subroutine is being called or you wanted to understand a specific subroutine what happens in that subroutine during execution so on either of these cases if you know the subroutine all you have to do is enter the subroutine name in our case i'm entering this subroutine but what's very important is you have to mention the program in which the subroutine is being called so usually when you have a subroutine it's easy very easy to backtrack and find the program in which the subroutine is written so uh if you see if you see any subroutine you can see in the top of that uh subroutine you can see the include program that is being called mention that program name so here i have mentioned the program name and the subroutine which i i wish to debug and i press enter so now what happens when i execute okay now i think this execution will get completed let me retrigger my execution from the first i'm pressing f8 if you see this is where i wanted to know because this perform statement is a trigger statement which triggers the subroutine that is in a program 
those, though the subroutine will be there as part of the program the trigger keyword for calling the subroutine is perform so the perform is the keyword and this is the subroutine that i wanted to inspect and it has exactly stopped at the place where i have placed the breakpoint because my breakpoint is at the subroutine in which i want to debug now from here if you press f5 it will get into the code block and from there you can navigate of course f5 f6 f7 f8 if you have watched my previous videos you would know the significance of those those buttons right now let's go to the next option breakpoint at statement is finished subroutine is finished function module is finished now let's go to the method now in case you know the method okay now in our case i'm pretty sure this method is being called and uh, because i have seen through this code before in your case you will also be knowing if you know whether a particular class is being called you can use that class name directly or if you want to know what happens on any particular class you can just break, place a break you can use that class again and you can inspect what happens inside this particular class so for both these cases whether a class is being called or whether uh, whether you want to inspect the flow logic in a particular class you can use this now as soon as you enter the class name if you go and press f4 on the method name it will list down all the methods that are present in the class this is part of an oops concept but i hope you i'll give you a small summary so class is basically a, another abap component in which there will be a lot of methods each methods will have an encapsulated form of code which is written inside so each code will have different functionalities and all the methods will be encapsulated in a class and the class is the top of the tree okay now inside the class i would like to debug this particular get instance method so i'll like select that method and i press continue and the place point would have been breaked now let me just continue my uh, execution if you see here the breakpoint is stopped at a place because this is called the method get instance in which i wish to inspect the code and this belongs to the class this which i have given in my breakpoint condition so it exactly stops at the method of the class that i have mentioned you see and similarly in the breakpoints also you can see the condition what i have placed the breakpoint for okay so at any point you can always come to the breakpoints tab and you can understand what are all the breakpoints that i have placed so far or what are all the breakpoints that are active so as i told you it is just a debugger breakpoint by now if you have watched my previous videos you would have understand what is a debugger breakpoint what is a session breakpoint and what is an external breakpoint let me just leave it as a debugger breakpoint because i'm not going to close this breakpoint session i i'm not going to close this breakpoint tool until i complete all the examples okay now in the desktop tree i see the breakpoint getting stop at the method in which i wish to inspect the code now let's complete this execution i'll go again and i'll see the next option for the breakpoint breakpoint at exception so in the exception also if you are familiar with a with any particular exception for example if i give the exception if you are familiar any exception class uh, that is i mean it's similar to class but here the class will be an exception class okay if you are familiar that an exception clause is being called you can mention that or if you wanted to know what's happening uh, on a particular exception class you can mention that as well or if you want to know whether an exception class is being called in that case also you can place a breakpoint but the breakpoint will only stop if the execution reaches to that particular exception class if the execution has not reached that code line then it means that that breakpoint is not valid at all okay now Uh, the same example as method so i'm i'm not going to give you an example here let me go to the next one source code so in case of source code by default you will have the program you are in and the include you are in or in other words you can still mention the program okay inside the program if there are any include you are uh, very much interested in you can give that include as well you can give the row number as well now for example i wanted to know whether a particular line number of an include which belongs to a program is being called during program execution so what i do i maintain the source code i maintain the program i maintain the include i maintain the row i set an breakpoint okay now it says that breakpoints can be only on executable lines which means that this whatever i'm trying to give here is not an executable line now for example let me place it at 27 and see okay i have to revisit it now let me okay i'll do one thing let me first find out the program name and uh, the execution i mean the include name and then i'll come here for now i'll just execute 
okay now let us consider this is the program okay and this is the include okay now i want to place a breakpoint at line number 25 okay breakpoint at source code okay so this is the source code that i am like ah fine you have to be in that exact program and include to place this breakpoint so right now the same program and same include but since the execution is part of the same program lines it is stopping like the the, the debugger screen the, the left side coding pane is on the same program and the same include henceforth i am allowed or i given the freedom of entering the row item directly row number directly now i press the row number and execute see the breakpoint is set at line number 25 now as i proceed further okay my breakpoint is stopping on all the breakpoints we have placed so far okay now see it is stopping at line number 25 so the source code helps us in stopping the breakpoint exactly at the line number that we wish to stop now let me do one thing let me place a breakpoint at line number 29 also okay this is just to show you that the breakpoint will not stop in case that line is never called now here line number 25 is what it is called now i'm going to place a breakpoint at line number 29 okay you see the breakpoint is placed but if we execute okay it will never stop at line number 29 let me do the complete cycle again you see it stops at this that was the function module this was the call function and then this was inside the function module breakpoint and this was the get instant method that we placed and this is the line number 25 and you see this is the message the first breakpoint that we placed and it never stopped at nine, line number 29 this confirms that line number 29 is never executed okay so this also gives a confirmation that line number 29 is never called during this flow part of the execution okay now the other options are guest program so this is a bit uh, deeper i mean this is this is a kind of a scenario where we don't uh, normally use it okay and basically at least i have not used it this st template this webdin pro is something related to the webdin pro component if you know the webdin pro component that is being used if you know the controller that is being called if you know the method you can you input those details and set a breakpoint and here this is this is for uh, okay this is where you can when ABAP plus screen stack changed or unprecise this is a miscellaneous breakpoints like it's like when you place this breakpoint okay when ABAP plus screen stack changed I'll explain you this what happens here is when I place this breakpoint if you see in standard okay there is some screen called as ABAP and screen stack screen so whenever there is a change in the stack whenever there is a new event that is being called again i would have explained about all these stack screens in my previous videos please do watch my previous videos so that you have a better understanding so whenever there is a change in this event here a breakpoint is triggered see i press f8 see the fourth number whenever fourth line is coming it is stopping now i press a breakpoint it is stopping in between all the breakpoints and whenever there is a change in stack when the fifth entry comes in the stack the program stops so whenever there is C6, the program stops. And also we have kept a breakpoint here as well. Now, again, it is moving and there's a change in the stack. Again, it is being stopped. So whenever there's a change in the stack, the breakpoint gets triggered and it will get called. Okay. So with this, we have covered almost all the options of the breakpoint at statement. We have different options here. Okay. We have different options. Almost we have covered all the options ex except for ST program, which is uh, basically not mostly widely used, and the exception class, which is similar to our method. Okay. Now I'm going to cover something very interesting. Now in our earlier classes, I have told you my breakpoints are only applicable up to 30 counts. Now let me see a breakpoint. I'm going to take you to a statement. Okay. Now see there can be many statements right now in case if i keep a breakpoint okay breakpoint at statement wherever there is an if condition i'm trying to place a breakpoint you see wherever there is if condition there are breakpoints if you keep counting in the complete flow logic definitely they will be more than 30 then how come we are able to place that 30 breakpoints more than 30 breakpoints that's because though the number of breakpoints are more than 30 all of them in my breakpoints and watchpoint tab will accumulate to just one line of breakpoint command okay so those breakpoints are not counted as the number of breakpoints it has but rather they are counted as a single breakpoint with the abap command of if that's it so if you see here though there are so many breakpoints there they are all covered in this one line item so that's how you have the possibility of placing more than 30 breakpoints 
Okay. I hope with this you have had a clear understanding of breakpoints and breakpoints at commands. You have we have seen different options. Hope this is useful for your debugging journey uh, across. And this will also help you in reaching out your uh, source of the issue, or it also help you in understanding the flow of the logic easier and quicker. Thank you all for your time. Wish you please, wish you peace and blessings.